Welcome, Zion Lutheran Church and friends. Here we are for another hymn sing. We're so happy to be with you. We have the usuals here today. We have Rachel, we have Jeanette, we have Susie, we have Maxine, and myself as well. Well, our first hymn that we're going to sing together is Blessed Jesus at Your Word. It's found in your Lutheran service book, 904. Tobias Klausnitzer, born in Thun near Annaberg, Saxony, around 1619, as far as I could find. He studied at various universities and finally at Leipzig, where he graduated with an M.A. in 1643, was appointed in 1644 as chaplain to the Swedish Regiment. In that capacity, he preached the Thanksgiving sermon at St. Thomas's Church in Leipzig, and on the ascension, uh, accession of Christina as Queen of Sweden in 1645. In 1649, he was appointed pastor at Weeden and remained there until his death on May 7th, 1684. Blessed Jesus at your word. is our next selection as you can see written by Natalie Sleeth she was born October 29th 1930 and died March 21st in 1992 she was an American composer she was born in Evanston Illinois she began to study the piano at the early age of four in 1952 she earned a BA in ministry at Wellesley College in Massachusetts Sleeth received an honorary doctorate from West Virginia Wesleyan College in 1989 and from Nebraska Wesleyan University in 1990. An organist, she wrote over 180 highly successful selections for church and school. One of Sleeth's best known anthems for choir is entitled Joy in the Morning and is written for West Virginia Wesleyan College Concert Chorale on the occasion of her husband's inauguration as president of the college in 1977. The anthem, which we are about to sing, Hymn of, uh, Hymn of Promise, was composed in early 1985 and dedicated simply to Dr. Sleeth, to Ron, 
who was diagnosed with cancer and died weeks after its premiere. Soon after the anthem was published, it became a hymn under two different names. In the bulb, there is a flower, which is sung widely in the United Church of Canada. Did you know this, Maxine? Well, Canadian trivia. It appears as hymn 703 in the United Church of Canada hymnal, Voices United as hymn 433 in the New Century Hymnal produced by the United Church of Christ in the U.S. and as Hymn 707 under the title Hymn of Praise in the United Methodist Hymnal. Let's sing together. Isn't that nice? All the way from Canada. What do you think of that, Maxine? I love it. That was a good song. From Canada, even. Wow. It's from Canada, Maxine. The next hymn is O Worship the King, found in your Lutheran service book 804. We're singing verses 1 to 3 and 6, as you can see on the screen. It's written by Robert Grant. He was born in India. 1779 and died there as well in 1838. Uh, his writing was influenced by William Keith's paraphrase of Psalm 104 in the Anglo Genevan Psalter of 1561. Grant's text was first published in Edward Bickerseth's Christian Psalmody in 1833 with several unauthorized alterations in 1835. His original sixth stanza of the text was published in Henry Eliot's Psalm and Hymns. The original stanza three was omitted in Lift Up Your Hearts. Of Scottish ancestry, Grant was born in India where his father was a director of East India Company. He attended Magdalen College, Cambridge, and was called to the bar in 1807. He had a distinguished public career of governor of Bombay and as a member of the British Parliament, where he was sponsored a bill to remove civil restrictions on Jews. Grant was knighted in 1834. His hymn texts were published in the Christian Observer, in Eliot's Psalms and Hymns, and posthumously by his brother as Sacred Poems in 1839. We'll sing together.
got an itchy thumb. I was kind of ahead on that one. I keep pushing the button too early. Praise to the Lord the Almighty. LSB 790, written by Joachim Neander. He was born at Bremen in 1650. He was the eldest child of marriage of, of Johann Joachim Neander and Catherine Nipping, which took place in September 18th, 1649. The father being a uh, then third uh, a master in the third form in the Patagonium at Bremen. After passing through the Patagonium himself, he entered himself as a student at the Gymnasium Illustre, or otherwise known as Academic Gymnasium of Bremen in October of 1666. German student life in the 17th century was anything but refined. Neander seems to have been a riotist and as fond of questionable pleasures as most of his fellows. In July 1670, Theodore Under Eich came to Bremen as pastor of St. Martin's Church with the reputation of a pietist. Not long after, Neander and two like-minded comrades went to a service there one Sunday in order to criticize and find a matter of amusement. But the earnest words of Under Eich the pastor there touched his heart, and this, with his subsequent conversion, with Undereich proved the turning point of his spiritual life. In spring of 1671, he became tutor to five young men, mostly, if not all, sons of wealthy merchants, and accompanied them to the University of Heidelberg, where they seemed to have remained till the autumn of 1637, where Neander learned to know and love the beauties of nature. In winter of 1673, uh, he spent at Frankfurt with friends of his pupils, and here he became acquainted with P.J. Spiner and J.J. Schutz. In the spring of 1674, he was appointed rector of the Latin school at Dusseldorf. Finally, in 1679, he was invited to Bremen as an unordained assistant to Undereich at St. Martin's Church and began his duties in the middle of July. Post was not inviting and is regarded merely as a stepping stone to further per, uh, uh, preferment, the remuneration being a free house and a salary, and the Sunday duty being a service with sermon at an extraordinary hour of 5 a.m. Neander was the first important hymn writer of the German Reformed Church since the written, uh, he written, mostly written his hymns in Dusseldorf after his lips were sealed to any but official work. He died in 1680. We'll sing together, praise to the Lord the Almighty. Thank you. 
praise you, O God, Lutheran Service Book 785, written by Julia Corey, who was born in New York, New York in 1882. She was the daughter of a prominent New York architect. Her father was also a Sunday school superintendent and an amateur hymnologist. Partly because of his influence, Julia began to write hymns at an early age. She was a member of the Brick Presbyterian Church. She married Robert Haskell Corey in 1911 and was a member of the Presbyterian Church in Englewood, New Jersey for all of her married life. She was a member of the Hymn Society that met in New York City all her adult life and died in Englewood, New Jersey in 1963. She raised three sons and they had 15 grandchildren. Let's sing together. Conversation, excuse me. Two different meanings. In holy conversation. Lutheran Service Book 772. Well, I got a reading problem, okay? Yeah, you also said praise earlier when it was promised. Oh. Written by Gregory Wismar. He was born January 9th, 1946, in New Jersey, in Jersey City. His education uh, was received at Concordia Senior College in Fort Wayne, Indiana, in 1967. He had a Master of Divinity from Concordia Seminary, St. Louis, 1971. Master of Science from Southern Con Connecticut State University, 1977 and doctor in ministry from Hartford Seminary in 1990. He was a pastor in many and various churches and places in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Finally, a member of the Commission on Worship in St. Louis from 1990 to 1995, and then a research fellow at the Yale Institute of Sacred Music, Literature, and Arts in 1991. His achievements are that uh, he has been listed as a noteworthy minister by Marcus Who's Who. We'll sing together in holy conversation. Thank you. 
the next hymn we'll sing together, found in your Lutheran service book, page 721. Doris Akers is the author of this hymn. She was born in 1923 in Missouri. She died in 1995 in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Doris' most productive period came after she moved to Los Angeles, California. As the founder and leader of the Sky Pilot Choir, she was the pioneer of what became known as the Doris Akers Sky Pilot Sound, referring to her distinctive style of directing and arrangement that was subsequently much imitated. She was also a recording artist and songwriter in her own right. Among her best known compositions were Sweet Sweet Spirit, How Big Is God, and Sweet Jesus. She also co-wrote Lord Don't Move That Mountain, she contributed to several films of the period. Her trouble was prominent, really featured in the Bessie Smith's biopic, Bessie and Me, while Lead Me, Guide Me was included in Elvis Presley's final movie. Later, she also featured in the videos to Bill Gaither's Old Friends and Turn Your Radio On. Through the 80s and 90s, she became music director at Grace Deliverance Church in Minneapolis before dying of cancer at the age of 72. Lead me, guide me.
Glory be to God the Father, found in your Lutheran service book, page 506. I had a joke, but I'm not going to tell it. Really? Yeah. Can I sure? Yeah, because it would make you mad. Oh, it was about you choir people. <laughs> I probably heard worse. Yeah. Moving on. Glory be to God the Father. Well, we just wanted to warn you that in the choir this morning there is a Mrs. Sharp and a Mr. Flat. <laughs> Glory be to God the Father. 506. Written by Horatius Bonar, who was born in Edinburgh in 1808. He died in 1889. His education was obtained at the, at the high school and the university of his native city. He was ordained in the ministry in 1837 and since then has been pastor at Kelso. In 1843, he joined the Free Church of Scotland. His reputation as a religious writer was first gained on the publication of the Kelso Tracts, of which he was the author. He has also written many other prose works, some of which have been very largely circulated. Nor is he less favorably known as a religious poet and hymn writer. The three series of hymns, Hymns of Hope, Faith and Hope, have passed through several editions. Glory be to God the Father. Thank you, Maxine, for that very wonderful ending. Well, I was just thinking about why Mr. Flat doesn't sing with us. <laughs> <laughs> That's because, because, because I read. Okay. Because He Lives is our next song, written by Gloria Gaither. Yeehaw, the Gaithers, here we go. She was born in March 4th, 1942. She is a Christian songwriter, an author, a speaker, editor, academic. She's the wife of Bill Gaither, also sang in the Bill Gaither Trio, one of the most influential groups in recent Christian history. She was born Gloria Lee Sickle in 1942 in Michigan, daughter of a pastor. She spent most of her childhood and high school career in the Battle Creek area of Michigan, working a brief time for the Kellogg Company. Sickle graduated from high school. She attended Anderson University in Anderson, Indiana, where she triple majored in English, French, and sociology. Whee! Upon her graduation, she took a job at Alexandria Monroe High School as a French teacher. There, she met Bill Gaither, who was teaching English at the time. I didn't know Bill Gaither taught English, did you? I didn't. Well, we do now. She married Bill in 1962. Do you even know who Bill Gaither is, Susie? Yeah, you don't. 
They were married in 1962, and they began writing songs recreationally by the end of the 60s. Gloria Bill and his brother Danny Gaither were touring steadily as the Bill Gaither Trio. In 1991, she attended Ball State University, received a Master of Arts in Literature. She taught as a professor at Anderson University for periods in the late 80s and late 90s. In 1996, she spearheaded the creation of the Gaither Family Resources in Alexandria, Indiana, and she currently serves as co-owner and managing director. In 2002, she launched Homecoming, and she currently acts as the writer, interviewer, and contributing editor. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. to our final hymn already, believe it or not. All praise to thee, my God, this night. 883 in your Lutheran service book, written by Thomas Ken. He was born in England in 1637, and he died in 1711. He studied at Winchester College and New College, Oxford, England, ordained in the Church of England in 1662. He served various pastoral, 
places. Uh, he served as a chaplain at Winchester College, a chaplain at, to the princess, later Queen Mary in The Hague, and to the Bishop of Bath and Wells in 1685 to 1691. He was a man of conscience and independent mind who did not shirk from confrontations with royalty. When King Charles II came to visit in the, and, his independent, and an independent mind who did not shirk from confrontations with royalty. I think I said that already. When King Charles II came to visit Winchester, he took along his mistress, the famous actress Nell Gwynn. Way back in the 1600s, they had famous actresses. Who would have thought? Ken was asked to provide lodging for her. The story is told that he quickly declared his house under repair and had a builder take the roof off. He later was dismissed from the court at The Hague when he protested a case of immorality. Then later in 1688, Bishop Ken refused to read King James II Declaration of Indulgences to the churches, which granted greater religious freedom in England, and he briefly was imprisoned in the Tower of London. A few years later, he refused to swear allegiance to the King uh, King William, and he lost his bishopship. Ken wrote many hymns, which were published posthumously in 1721 and republished in 1868 as Bishop Ken's Christian Year, or hymns and poems for the holy days and festivals of the church. He's best known for this morning, evening, and midnight hymns, which of uh, uh, of which have their final stanza and famous doxology also in Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. We'll sing together our last hymn. Zion for singing and playing. We thank you very much here and we wish you God's blessings as you meditate on these hymns and we pray that it keeps you focused upward so we can have the mindset of Christ as we look at all the uncertainty in these days. We miss you, we love you, and we'll see you soon and sing with you soon. Bye.